Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 50 of the What Are We Doing podcast. Listen, dude, the billionaires are beefing, okay, and things are spicing up. All right. It's Trump versus Elon Musk. And right now, honestly, we'll get to it in a minute, but it's Elon Musk versus everybody at this point in time. But Trump took it to his own site. Okay. We're talking true social, baby. I don't have my account yet. I'm waiting on my username to be approved. I really want truth.com backslash wad and so it's not available because someone else already took it so we're waiting on our truth.com uh username to come through so uh but anyways trump took to his own site and just i mean roasting roasting elon musk dude just destroying him destroying elon this post of course is coming fresh off of elon's own personal affairs uh coming to light as well like now, of course, we all know the man had secret twins. He's got baby mamas coming out left and right. He's got like, you know, he's got like nine kids. Now, I thought, I thought it was him and Grimes all the way, Elon and Grimes. It was just that one kid that they had, XX Tension, I think is what they named him. Uh, so I thought Grimes was his one true love. But as it turns out, Elon Musk is a scumbag like the rest of the billionaires, right? This is what Trump said. Trump says, when Elon Musk came to the White House asking me for help on all of his many subsidized projects, whether it's electric cars that don't drive long enough, driveless cars that crash, or rocket ships to nowhere, without which subsidies he'd be worthless, and telling me how he was a big Trump fan and Republican, I could have said, drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. Now, this then, obviously, I mean, you know, like, there hasn't been a hotter roast since the one that Comedy Central did in 2011, okay? And all of this is, is and of course, Elon tweeted back saying none of it's true. Of course, he has to say that. That's what he says all the time. That's what he says about this other begging scandal. Dude, the Wall Street Journal puts out an article that says Elon's begging the CEO now of Google. He's begging the co-founder of Google because apparently Elon is banging his wife, according to the Wall Street Journal, allegedly. We don't know. Elon, of course, said, tweeted, not true. Uh, but here's the thing. Google and his wife haven't said anything yet. And so why wouldn't they, right? If you're a billionaire, okay, and Elon's your friend and you're taking the picture at the party with him, whether it's a creep shot or not, like what's with the no response from Google and the now, I guess, I think they're divorced ex-wife, maybe. You know what I mean? Uh, so... It's interesting, dude, and I hope I hope Elon is just happy on Mars, okay? He's going to have his little, his weird little family. The guy has nine kids. He, first of all, he works 80,000 hours a week at 19 different companies, and he has nine kids. It's, it's insane, and I think we're he's getting more. And, dude, the shit with his dad. Did you see the shit with Elon's dad? Oh, that deserves one of these. Okay, because Elon's dad, listen, years ago, okay, no need for deets, years ago, Elon's dad married his, his wife, okay, he's, he's, he's his second or third or however many wives he's had since then, he marries this woman, and this woman has a daughter, right? So now this woman's daughter becomes Elon's stepsister and Elon's dad's stepdaughter, right? I said that right? Yeah. Uh, Elon's dad is having a baby with his stepdaughter, that girl that like he raised basically It's basically the, you know, it's basically real life. I thought up until this very point in time that the whole stepsister, step sibling, uh, major takeover of the porn industry. 
I thought that was fabricated. I thought that was just them trying to spice shit up because we were sick of all the stuff Riley Reed was doing. You know what I mean? I thought, I thought that was just made up by them. But apparently, it's not. And it, 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 it's real. Because Elon Musk's dad, Daddy Musk, is having a baby with his own stepdaughter. You know what I mean? A little weird. But hey. That's okay, I guess. Because that's life now. I guess they can, I don't, can they do that? And like he, his dad says, his dad says is the weirdest quote. It's like, I believe we were put on this earth to procreate. I'll put it on the screen if I can. Uh, but it's just, it's strange. It's strange. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Listen. This, here's a fun fact, and you know this is true. Everyone can relate. Ready? You know it's true. You know it's true. At least if you're in Pennsylvania, it's 100% true. I know for a fact. All of McDonald's drive through experiences now go like this. Welcome, and thank you for stopping at the High Street McDonald's. Will you be using your mobile app today? And then me and Meg's in the car. Holy shit, what a nice voice. Is this Chick-fil-A? What a polite person over the intercom. These are all the thoughts we're having while this is happening because it's such a lovely experience. And then we're like, well, no, we didn't use the app today. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We are avid app users. We just had 11,000 points. Fuck with us. You know what I mean? So sometimes we use the app, sometimes we don't. And then we say, no, you know, not today. And then you hear every time, listen, every time this is what you hear. What can I get for her? <laughs> they have these pre recorded, will you be using our app today from the nicest manager, upper staff person pre recorded just so they can promote this app because they know their employees aren't going to get over the intercom and say, Hey, will you be using the mobile app today? Some of them will, but most of them won't. They're going to say, welcome to McDonald's. What do you want? Or what, what's your order? What can I get for you? Or, or some, most of the responses that we get at the drive through these days, right? You know what I mean? Like, so they can't rely on the teenagers and the people taking the orders at the windows to actually say what they're supposed to say. So we have to put these pre-recorded messages and what you're not going to put a miserable one on there. Like, welcome to McDonald's. You want to use your mobile app? No. You get your peppy spit fuck of a manager who just got her raise because now she has a 401k and McDonald's is paying her tuition and she's making $26 an hour working at McDonald's. So she's happy. And so she's pre-recorded these, these, the drive through messages and you get them every time. Hi, welcome to high street McDonald's. Will you be using your mobile app today? And it's just so upbeat and perky and it gets you ready. And then the miserable part-time employee comes on and they ask you, what do you want? What sauce? What size drink? Fries? Okay. Sometimes we have employees that we like at our McDonald's. There are some good McDonald's employees in our area, but all I'm saying is nine times out of 10, that peppy pre-record is pretty much followed by a miserable person. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Dude Robe. Listen up, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dude Robe, and it's summer 2022, baby. Okay? Kick back and relax with extra absorbent towel lining. We've got everything you need to find your ultimate chill all summer long at dudrobe.com, D U D E. Robe.com is where you're going to find everything you need this summer. Listen, just get done boogie boarding. Just get done tearing up them waves. Just got done laying poolside. You got to jump in now. You're crisping up. You got to cool off. You got to jump in the pool. Okay. Just got done working on that slick, sexy tan like Meg's was in this pick right here just a few days ago. We'll get to it in a minute. You know what I mean? Know what Megs did after this pic? She went in the water, then she put on her fucking dude robe. Okay? Hey, listen, we just got back from vacation. You know, pod's late. You know, okay? First thing we packed on our vacation, dude robe. Remember? 
Remember the first day on the beach? The first day we were on the beach on vacation. I said, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Like I was a little embarrassed to take mine down to the water. So I didn't on the first day. I'll admit, I'll admit I didn't take mine on the first day, but we saw someone, dude. We saw someone. They just got out of the water. They went back up to their umbrella. They, they got the umbrellas down there. They threw it on and then they walked back down to the water to hang out with their, you know, they had their, like their koozie, their white claw or whatever. I saw someone in a dude robe on vacation. Like it, it's what, what do you think we're fucking talking about? Listen, dude And when you get there, you will use promo code wad. That's W a W D. And you're going to get 20% off. No one else gets that. No one else. I think their newsletter gives you maybe 10. I think their Facebook page maybe gives you 15. And on select occasions, they run sales at 20% off, but wad will get you 20% off. Always 20% off. Always. W-A-W-D, and when you get it, you're probably going to get free shipping too, okay? You're going to get your dude robe. They've got the slides. They've got the shorts. They've got everything you need for getting out the ocean this summer. They've got everything you need for getting in and out of that pool, whether it's inflatable, whether it's an easy pop-up one that says it's easy and it's not, whether it actually is an easy pop-up one and it only takes you 30 minutes, or whether you got that in-ground joint, Okay? Maybe you're at a hotel. Maybe they got one. Maybe they got two. Maybe you're at the ocean. Okay, there's so many options this summer to wear your dude robes. They're, they still got them, and there's still time. Listen, it's we got August, and we still got some of September yet. Dudrobe.com. Go order one now. Right before your beach trip, use promo code WAD at checkout. And if you don't use the promo code, dude, it's kind of pointless. So get 20% off W-A-W-D, dudrobe.com. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. Listen. Listen to this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I I'm awake. Okay? It's episode 50, dude. It's episode 50. And it would seem that the growing trend, that the growing trend for anyone in my age bracket and we're talking 30 to 40 years old let's throw in some 28s 28 to 42 okay this is the trend ready we're doing one of two things we're either a having mental breakdowns and moving to florida for a very short period of time and then they're coming back they're always back to pa everyone's always back to pa or You're traveling thousands of miles to embrace your inner spiritual healing journey. And boys, guess what? I've chosen the latter. I don't want to move to Florida. So I am going to get healed. Okay? Uh, I've knocked off uh, item list number five on my 2022 checklist. And I've officially booked my one-on-one plant-based healing ritual with Kathy. Now. For those of you who don't know, Kathy owns and operates Healing Your Fusion in West Colorado. I'm traveling to Colorado Springs, okay? Now, before you go say, Levi, this sounds like a bunch of weirdo stuff, okay? And to you, I say, once you've been awakened, you'll understand. And listen, I've done copious amounts of research, okay, manifestations. This is my journey. It's time for me, okay? It's time. It's time. The medicine is calling me, dude. The medicine is calling me. (laughs) You guys, I can't wait. Listen, this journey, it's going to be, you know what? It's going to be something that not only teaches us, but it's going to heal us, okay? Now, I bet you're wondering, okay, what is this thing, right? It sounds a little weird. What is it? I'm going to tell you what's included. Maybe you'll be interested. You come with me. We could get a group rate discount. Maybe I'll talk to them. We'll see. We can get you in with me. We'll go together. You know what I mean? So here's what's included. It's an eight-hour-long 
plant-based ceremony, okay? It's a a powerful and transformational plant-based medicine ceremony to help heal traumas and blockages while invoking manifestations and new beginnings. These assisted sessions are geared towards shifting consciousness, narratives, old stories, and patterns while wilding your panoramic views to release what no longer serves you. Fusion ceremonies are deeply healing, magical, and very, very safe experiences. Okay, I get it now. Listen, this is what, this is what Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox did. This is what they did, right? They went to the place. This is what they did down in the rainforest in Africa. So you go, and we were with 20 other strangers, and you all line up at, like, the, the edge of the rainforest over this weird fence and you go three by three and you drink lemongrass tea until you like by n- not your own volition just vomit everything out of your body so you so start, you have to vomit there's no way around you that can't part. get out of it and you have to vomit a certain amount before they let you get back with everybody so you're like cheering on everyone as they like throw up and I- okay this is how they fell in love i think that's what they said. They went to the African rainforest. They did this thing, this medical ceremony thing. And they did ayahuasca. And then they, they, they looked into each other's souls and fell in love. Holy shit. Okay, here we go. Um, and, you know, what it sounds like to me, and based on the website photos, is you go to this compound. I think it's a compound. That's what it looks like. Maybe it's a facility. Facility is a good word. You go, and of course, I think you're naked immediately. I don't think they allow, there's no clothing allowed on the property. So on the wall, you look around, and there's just like, there's quotes that say like, let go, and like, you're in control. Uh, And then like, they present you with the tray, and on this tray is a line of Coke, two dabs of acid, and 12 grams of mushrooms. And it's an eight-hour ceremony, buddy, so buckle up, okay? Here's a review from an actual person who's gone. And this is part of the reason why I'm going. Here we go. Uh, My years over the experience uh, with Kelly has been transformative. Not only has she helped me navigate uh, some debilitating health issues that I struggled with for a long time, but she actually knew I was pregnant before I did. Holy shit. She helped uh, she helped me get contractions going once my water broke so I didn't have to have a C-section uh, and has been a solid friend and advisor uh, and, uh, before, post, and during my pregnancy. I mean, wow, dude. Wow. I mean, for over $2,000 an hour, this bitch better be able to tell me if I'm pregnant, but I want to know the gender, the exact birthday, and if the child's going to be successful or not. Like, can she give me that information? How do I get that information? Is that like the 12-hour ceremony and then you can tell me all those things? Like what Ashley didn't mention in her review is that uh, her uterus was removed uh, at the age of 19 due to a a horrible uh, horseback riding accident. And they literally, um, you know, uh, so so then they had to do this plant-based ceremony with her and then push, push, breathe, you know, and now... She has a beautiful baby and she had a baby without a uterus because of this, this lady, this medical healing place. So I'm happy for them. And I can't wait to see what happens to my reproductive system after my ceremony next fall. Listen, so you guys know, you can see them in the background. You see in other episodes and stuff, uh, we're real big into Funkos here. Okay. Funkos are releasing left and right. Comic-Con just happened. So we got all the Marvel stuff announced. We got all the DC stuff announced. We got all the music stuff announced. And now we've got Funko Pops for them all, which means my wallet's empty. You know what I mean? I need more constantly when new and cool ones come out. I don't buy a lot, but I buy some, and it's a terrible issue. Here's the thing. I get my Funko Pops from this place, and they send me emails after I get them. So when I got my Post Malone sunflower dress pop, I was, A, ecstatic, and B, honored that they sent me an email, and uh, they asked me to write a review on my Funko Pop. And so I thought, what better way right now uh, than to just, you know, uh, write the review live here with you guys and then we'll submit it to the site and hopefully they accept it and they'll 
they'll put it up on the Post Malone uh, sunflower dress. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're typing. Mm -hmm. When this Funko Pop arrived, it was a moment. It had me saying, wow. Megs and I started running circles around the house, wrecking our brand new pair of white Iverson shoes in the process. Anyways, when I saw the attention to detail and the dedication that went into the design of not only the dress, but this man's face, his tattoos are almost real life. As an official member of the Post Malone fan club, vice president of Posty's Posty Club, and a certified top fan badge holder via the official Post Malone Facebook page, I own three of the Post Malone 257s, all dedicated to different sections of my one-bedroom apartment. I must say, the only other word you could use to describe this pop is beautiful. I would highly recommend a PM257 for your home office, kitchen, that's where one of mine is now, and maybe your coffee table. I mean, if I could, I'd rate this pop 257 out of five stars. And I mean, that's the review. That's how you give a review on a Funko Pop. You know what I mean? I think that's the only way. Because they're kind of all the same. <laughs> and I think that's going to be a really good one for their site. Uh, listen, Subway's back. And I can't wait. Here's the story. Ready? I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> Remember when I talked about the Subway series a couple episodes ago? Here we go. We're doing more with it. The marketing continues. <laughs> it's Subway, and it's the new series competition. On July 27th, wait, what's today? That's today, dude. I'm missing it. Fuck. I'm missing it. We missed it. Great. Great. So now I can't, <clears throat> now I can't do it. On July 27th today, a Las Vegas Bad Apple Tattoo, Subway will host a block party where nine Subway superfans will be able to receive a tattoo of the Subway Series logo by two-time Ink Master Champion DJ Tom Bay. I think is how you say his name. I don't know. Or a member of his team, of course. Depending on where the sandwich fanatics receive the tattoo and how big it is, they'll be able to receive free Subway sandwiches for a month, a year, or even a lifetime. So, here's the thing. Get just the logo right here. Just get the logo. Then that's like, you'll probably get a month worth of free subs. Dope. I do that. Okay? Here's the next thing. Get a foot long steak teriyaki sub right here on your whole forearm that's gotta be good that's gotta be good for like a year's worth right and then i'm talking subway series logo with all 12 subs around it as a back piece lifetime you know what i mean gotta be lifetime yeah, so, oh, well, okay, Jesus Christ, I didn't fucking even, if I would have read the next line, all that would have made sense. They tell you, you get 12 by 12, if it tells you exactly how to get the lifetime, that's stupid, but okay, I'd want the lifetime one, so, dude, and then look, of course, oh, what a, don't be a pussy, don't be a pussy, it says, if you prefer a not-so-permanent way to show your love for Subway, airbrush tattoos will be available at the event. Being a true block party, there will be free Subway sandwiches, a DJ, a dance floor, and graffiti artist uh, on hand to create murals. All the details can be found here. Damn it. I want to go. <laughs> and it's today. I wonder if I could get a ticket right now. Megs would probably kill me if I flew to Vegas today, but it might be an option. 
it might be an option. Okay. Okay. All right. So, listen, um, dude, so, so like recently, recently, as, as everyone knows who knows me maybe, uh, and, and a few other people, I recently, just in the past, uh, deleted all of my Facebook friends. Uh, so all 3,000 of them. I had like close to 3,000 friends and I deleted everyone. I deleted Megs. I deleted Kodak. Everyone got deleted. Chef. I'm still waiting on a response back from Chef. He hasn't responded yet and I don't think I'm going to get back into the club. Unfortunately, it might be too late for me, but I still have Megs uh, as that tie-in with that man. So anyways... Uh, so I re-added a few, if you made the cut, congratulations. Uh, but now I'm getting friend requests from people and this is like the reaction for every friend request I get. Ready? Here we go. I look, here we go. Ready? Oh, a new friend request. Look. <laughs> oh, delete. That's every time. Every time. I look at the phone, I laugh, I delete the friend request, that's it. I don't want to be friends with any of these people. Now, last Tuesday, I got a friend request from somebody, and boy, you know like when memories get triggered, you like, you remember so many certain things. Um, like, you, like, like a smell, or you see a person, or a name, or just any type of memory, and then it just snaps you back to that memory, and you remember it so vividly, and it's something you haven't thought about in like 20 years. Boy, when this kid's name popped up on my friend request list, it instantly took me back. So, story time. When I decided not to be the most hated kid in high school, uh, much like middle school, uh, in the summer of 2006, I devised a plan, okay? Dominate the school, easy. You've got six to seven hours a day to do that. You've got about 30 hours a week to dominate the school. And if you can't take over a corporation or a business or a job, a.k.a. a school, like a high school, with 30 hours a week to do it, you're doing something wrong. That's more than enough time. So the school part was easy. Now, by junior year, I had 275 kids in my school wearing shirts that had my damn name on it with a logo, much like the one I'm wearing, but it promoted me at the time, okay? School popularity equal done. I was homecoming king. School was easy. Now, phase two was the bus. The bus is a lot harder because the bus you have to ride twice a day. So if school's easy for you, but that bus ride could be about an hour long and it could be miserable or it could be the time of your life. So you've got to dominate not only the school, but the bus as well. So phase two was the bus. And everyone knows in early 2000s, might not be this way anymore because of COVID and exclusion and everyone's equal and all this shit and kids are so sensitive. Everyone knows in the early 2000s, bus politics were the cool kids and the popular kids sat in the back of the bus. And unfortunately, the nerds and the weird kids sat up front and talked to the bus driver. That was their friend. Okay. It's unfortunate, but that's just what happened. Okay. These are the times. So to start first day, I knew I had to make a bold move. Because as soon as I get on the bus, I noticed that the popular kids are already in the back. You know how I know? Because they have pillows, blankets, bags, snacks, and a trash can, and everything you need for a small party in the back of that bus as soon as I walk on. And I knew it was hauling and popping back there. So I made a bold decision and I went 60 to 75% of the way back where the auditions took place and where you most likely got accepted to go the whole 90 to 100%. Okay? So not in the middle, but not in the back either. But I'm getting there. Just enough to raise ears, but not enough to raise questions. Okay? 
So eventually I worked my way back there. You know why? Here was my in. The next summer, freshman year, I stuck in that 60 to 75% range, hovering more in the 75% because I knew sophomore year was going to be my move to make. Because that summer, the iPod mini came out. Okay, and I told this story with Paul last week. Go check it out, Paul. Go check out the call. It's on Patreon. Go check out our Patreon. It's only a dollar, you cheap fuck. Listen, so I knew that summer I was going to go get everything in my power to get a new iPod mini, and I was going to get a pink one because it was pink like this hoodie, and it was dope. And so I loaded up all my music from Bear Share and LimeWire that I could all summer long, and I went in with my iPod. One of the rest of the kids had either A, rinky-dink little MP3 players, Kodak knows what I'm talking about, or they were still using CD players, okay? And everyone knows on the bus, you can't use a CD player because that shit be skipping every bump, every rock, every pebble that bus runs over. So I was the cool kid with the brand new iPod. And so they immediately accepted me to the back sophomore year. It was a very easy phase two for me. Not a lot of people can do it. And not a lot of kids made it that way. When I got back there, we only ever accepted one more person within my three-year reign of the back of the bus until I graduated. So, these other kids in the back of the bus, we make friends. We're friends. We're not friends in school, though. We only ever see each other a couple of times in school because we're all in different shops and it's in different parts of the building. But that's a good thing because that was easier for me to dominate my part of the school and they took care of that other part of the school for me because they knew me as a cool kid from the bus so they could vouch for me while they were over there and I was over here. Easy. Domination. Okay? Anyways, these kids, they weren't as fortunate as some. And so when they invited me to their birthday party, when I tell you, listen, my also my goal through high school as most kids is I was trying to get laid, okay? Don't tell my parents, but it kind of happened. So anyways, when that, you know, that goal was also trying to come up in my life, they were like, yo, you should come to my party. I'm going to be 16 I'm or 17, whatever. We're going to have booze. We're going to have drugs. You're going to get laid. It's going to be lit. It's going to be a smash. Okay. And I'm like, yo, I got to go. This is it. This is my time. First high school party. I'm going to try to convince my dad to let me spend the night. And if that happens, shit's definitely going down. Because by the next morning, we'll be okay. I'll get dropped off. I'll walk it off. I'll be fine. I'll fake it. And they'll never know a thing. First high school party, success. I'm getting ready, okay? I convinced dad. I'm taking the bus there. And then that somehow I'm getting home. I think parents are going to drive me. That was probably a lie because that never happened. Um, when I tell you... When I tell you that... Um, when I tell you that um, they lived in a garage is an understatement. Uh, well, I think that's what it was, honestly. It wasn't, um, it was not a house. It was not an apartment. It was, it was not anything that kind of resembled one. It, it was a garage. The floor was concrete. Um, the f there was no kitchen. There was a fridge where a fridge would be in a garage. And their rooms were separated via curtains. And so, like, this is what I was experiencing at my first high school party. I slept on the floor in a sleeping bag in a garage. And there were no drugs. There was very little alcohol. No one was getting laid. And we all kind of needed to cuddle up to each other to stay warm that night because it was miserable. And that's how they lived. And so when I tell you that was like the first and one of the last times that I ever experienced poverty, I mean, it, it just, it, the only thing, the only thing that it can really, the only thing that can, it can really, uh, it can really, you can really describe it as is, is, is the town of, uh, of Chadbourne, North Carolina. Have you seen... Have you seen the town? Listen, um, and it's not even, it's not, it's not even, 
it's not even a town. Just Google Google Chadbourne and and just look at the things. I'm just gonna Google here. I'm just gonna Google Chadbourne Chadbourne and C. And I'm just gonna click on news. Let's just go through some of the things. Here's in the first we have one, two, three. On the first page, there's at least four obituaries for people who died, and they're all kind of some younger, some older. Next is a uh, man arrested quickly makes bail after a hit and run death. So this guy ran somebody over. He's back out on the street. Um, uh, firefighters uh, failed to put out a fire in an apartment building. Um, you know, uh, Shelly died. Uh, someone hosted an art show. Okay, that's weird. Uh, oh, argue over money leads to shooting. Man dead. Uh, Chadbourne Motel fire ruled accident. One person badly burned and airlifted. I mean, it doesn't get worse than this. And then I told Megs, there's got to be something. There's got to be something else. There's got to be one more thing that's happened in Chadbourne, North Carolina. When I tell you, if you have ever seen the movie, I think they filmed the movie. Look this up. This might be true. I think they filmed the movie The House of Wax with Paris Hilton. You remember that movie? The House of Wax with Paris Hilton. I think they filmed that movie in Chadbourne, North Carolina. I think that's why it's still operating. They're still running off of that movie money uh, because it looks just like it. The town in that movie that they get stuck in with the mannequins and then they become wax figures or whatever, that's the town that this looks like when you have to drive through. Megs and I drove through at night. And so I knew I knew there had to be one more thing. I knew there had to be one more thing. And ladies and gentlemen... The police chief of Chadbourne County, the, the man we are supposed to trust the most in these city limits when it comes to crime and protecting us and being safe in this, in this really what looks like a shithole of a town. Uh, former Chadbourne police chief uh, Anthony Spivy was taken into custody in Columbus County after faking his own death and leading police on a day-long search both on land and underwater, officials say. Official called the investigation a fiasco. <laughs> of course they did. You know, um, uh, you know, that is a... <laughs> Uh, that is a word my father would use, a fiat. I haven't heard the word fiasco used since I've seen my father. My father would use the word fiasco every day. Um, listen, so this is what he did, okay? The chief police, <clears throat> the chief police of, of, of Chadbourne, North Carolina, was stealing uh, drugs, cocaine and marijuana, presumably, uh, guns and money from the evidence locker of the police station, okay? He would go in there, just take what he wants. I think they said he took over like eight, maybe 10, 12 grand. It's not a lot, but that's probably all they're confiscating there in that region of North Carolina anyways, but it's still legal. Uh, so, and also the guns, you know, there's probably three or four or five in there. He might've taken one or two and there's probably, you know, some, some bags of some drugs in there that he probably took that he thought no one would miss. And so, um, they called him. And so when they arrested him, uh, obviously because he was the police chief, he's got some strings to pull. He's got a little bit of money, probably the money he stole. And he got out on bail. And so then he decided with his two friends that uh, he was going to fake his death. And so by doing so, um, his friends were going to tell the news and the police station and the morgue and everything else that, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, Tony, uh, yeah, he just couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't p go through trial. He jumped into the river and he committed suicide. And so, unfortunately, um, he's no longer with us. You know what I mean? And it's unfortunate, but he's dead now. So, no need to go looking for him. We tried to find his body on our own, but, you know, we couldn't find it. It's the river. It took it away, you know? Um, so, his two buddies helped him commit suicide, allegedly, but they were faking it, right? So then, uh, <laughs> so then... 
Anthony Spivy, uh, was arrested at his aunt house, his aunt's house in South Carolina on Thursday. Uh, Brenda uh, told uh, WMBF News that she did not know that her nephew was on the run from the authorities. First of all, you knew. You knew. And so uh, she she should be arrested. Arrest her. Uh, she knew that she's she's a, a you know she's a you know she's hiding him. And so this guy also too thought a he would fake his own death by um, uh, jumping in the river, uh, suicide in the river. Cool. And B he thought he would just be fine by going and staying at his aunt's house twenty minutes down the road. 20 minutes that way to South Carolina at his aunt's house. He didn't think they were going to, no one would recognize him. No one would know his name or see his face or know who he is or has ever seen him before. 20 minutes down the road. Um, So she definitely knew. Uh, And so the Columbus County Sheriff's Office said that more than $64,000 in taxpayers' money was spent on the search because when someone goes missing or someone commits suicide and it's in the river, they have to try to recover the body to actually prove that it happened. Like, it has to be an actual event. So um, this $64,000 in taxpayer dollars went to uh, Sheriff Jody Green's, um, you know, search and rescue underwater. They need scuba gear. They gotta, they've got to search the whole river, the whole lake system, whatever that looks like down there. And so Sheriff Jody Green wants Spivy and all those other people accused of helping him uh, to uh, pay the money back in restitution. She says the time and equipment used investigating this elaborate ruse, if you will, orchestrated by Anthony Spivy and his band of misfits, he said, please know I am seeking restitution for all of the defendants. And I mean, trust me, this town needs this money. I'm thinking it would only take 200 to maybe 300, maybe $500,000 at the most, which is not, not too far off to be obtainable. We would only need like 400 grand. And I think we could buy the entire town of Chadbourne. Okay. I think we buy the entire town of Chadbourne. We rename it to Bofum County. And then me, Paul, Justin, and Scott are going to be like the sheriff, the police chief, the deputies, and we're going to run the city. And then obviously we're going to rebuild. We're tearing down all the shops everything's coming down and then we're going to rebuild. We'll put Corpo there. We're going to build a podcast studio in Bofum County. We're going to put uh, a Wawa in Bofum County. We're going to put a Trader Joe's, a Target. We're going to build um, Pixel and Hammer Corpo. We're going to put a wedding venue in Bofum County. So that's going to attract more people from like Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, North Carolina, OBX, all those people are going to come. So we're going to re, we're going to, and then we're going to arrest all the fucking everyone else. All the people will get arrested. That's all there. And then we'll just start over. It'll just be us there for the first couple of weeks until we get business and people to move and incentivize it and build apartment complexes and, you know, all that stuff. So we've got some work to do, but I think um, we're going to, I think we're going to, um, I think we're going to, we're going to buy, we're going to buy the city of Chadbourne, North Carolina. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, dude, we're back. We're back. And we're going to, we'll wrap it up here, but we're back. And um, we went to Myrtle Beach, okay, Megs and I, for a week. Trip came uh, with some fun and some other things. Listen, dude, uh, this guy, oh my God, dude, this guy on the beach. We saw this guy on the beach, and I swear to God, look up, um, uh, look up, um, Look up like the bad lion from Madagascar 2, okay? Look up the bad lion from Madagascar 2. And Rakunga, according to DreamWorks Wiki, oh, Jesus fandom, Get Rakunga out of here. is the oh main my God. antagonist Holy of Madagascar. Holy shit. Shit. Makunga from Madagascar 2. I swear to God, this man on the beach looked just like this lion. He looked just like him. He was the same height. He had the same tan. He was this bronze, okay? And he had the same hair. And he had the same everything. I told Megs, look at this man. He looks just like the guy from Madagascar 2, and that's him. 
Um, he's voiced by Alec Baldwin, and he couldn't have been better. It couldn't have been a better match. It couldn't have been better. I'm not judging. Oh, I was I, I was getting him. I fucking high fived him. I high fived him. We're half we're friends. He's on. Fa- he's one of my 58 friends on Facebook. It's insane. It's insane the people you meet down there. And you know what else is insane? It's insane the things that you learn. Like Megs, she found this article, dude, while we were down there, okay? The bugs. You know we have bugs here. It's the spiders, okay? Large parachuting spiders could soon invade the East Coast. Guess what? PA, East Coast. Everybody here, East Coast. (laughs) Okay. Last year in Georgia, the... the non-native Juro spider population exploded. Golden webs draped porches, power lines, and mailboxes across 25 counties in the state uh, per research. I have several hundred, and they actually make a uh, place looking spooky with a little mess, messy webs. Okay, you don't know how to write. Look at these spiders. What they do, they make parachutes out of their webs so that they can catch the wind. So they're coming from Georgia, and they're just parachuting in to South Carolina. They're going to catch tailwind up the coast to North Carolina. They'll probably trickle down and float into Virginia a little bit. They'll hit I-95. They'll hit that expressway, okay? And then they'll probably make their way either up 15 or 83. And then they're here. And then we have these giant, look at this thing, this yellow, pink, giant parachuting traveling across the country spider that will bite you and kill you instantly. I swear to God, if it doesn't, I don't believe you. If I see this thing, I'm getting a 12 gauge shotgun and I'm shooting it three times. I swear to God, if I see one of these, I will riot. I will riot. Hey, what's up, guys? I actually just got off the phone with Paul. So I've got a solid 30-minute Patreon episode for you guys. So I am editing that down right now, and I'm going to have that uploaded with this episode. So if you go to wadpod.com backslash links, that's W-A-W-D dot com backslash L-I-N-K-S, you'll find our Become a VIP button. That'll take you to our Patreon. It's a dollar a month. It's not going to cost you anything. Uh, And you can listen to the full conversation with Paul. We go all over the place from uh, business ventures to opening podcast studios uh, to uh, politics to uh, just about technology, everything else, Apple, um, you name it. It's we're all over the place on today's call. So check that out. It's a Patreon exclusive. uh, And here is a quick snippet of that call. Again, you can listen to the whole thing. Uh, over at wanpod.com backslash links and our patreon link is there uh, join our patreon today it's a dollar a month thank you enjoy cool. other than that do, do you remember the days i was just listening to um you remember dane cook the the comedian and uh, yeah of course i remember dane cook pretty pretty much what, what do you pretty, think this is? pretty <laughs> much pretty much dominated my space well he was just on logan paul's podcast and just telling us it's like a weird crossover of yeah, people it's weird right but just telling the same story that he's told dozens of times but he like they back then like he couldn't get press like he was dropping his second comedy album after like already exploding and he couldn't get anyone to write articles about his album so they just released it and promoted the shit out of it he said two weeks later he was on the billboard top 100 charts because back then they didn't have categories and it was jay-z and then dane cook (laughs) like it Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and it just and then and then he said as soon as that happened, everyone who told him no, we're not gonna write an article about it, called him and said, Hey, we want to write an article. It's the most fascinating Amazing. thing. And then um after he made all Vic's success in movies, uh his brother, who was like his quote unquote manager at the time, stole like fifteen million dollars or something crazy. Did he get canceled? It feels like he got canceled, or Me Too, like he was a Me Too guy or something. I'm trying to remember what happened. He, he like well, that's what so out. so it, he. I think I think there was a time. I think there was a time where um he 
he a I, I don't know if he was accused of stealing jokes at one point. Um, and then um, his brother like stole all of his money. So like he got dropped by his agency and his label and all that shit. So I think I think he just didn't survive the transition like like, you know, those celebrities who like didn't survive the transition from MySpace to like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Like, hey, bro, where's Tila Tequila been? You know, tequila, holy cow. you remember? Yeah, I mean, like one of the few that did is like Bo Burnham was both time periods. What was Bo was Bo uh, MySpace guy, too? Well, not he was like a little because he's the same age as me. So like in like 2008. Like he was like doing tours of the U.S. doing comedy. Jesus. So like it's been a while. He's been around for a while because like I, I saw him at Millersville uh, when he came when I was like maybe my sophomore year, maybe been my freshman. Year. But he he came to Millersville and oh, like that's did cool. a show. That's cool. And so like he was then, and then he also like kind of, but he also left for five years. Uh, twenty fifteen, he stopped performing until tw- until twenty twenty when he was going to come back, and then everything happened. <laughs> so, and so yeah. And then he made Inside because he was just getting ready to go back on, and do comedy tours and the world ended. So, Well, and that's what I think. I told, I just told Justin the other day. I think um, it's funny that like he, he stopped and then came back. But I think, uh, I think here's, here's my hot take, speaking of uh, performers and taking a break. I think we get one more album from Justin Bieber and then he's done. Um, yeah, I think based on the way his life has been going and the fact that he's had like health issues for a while now. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, he's canceled two world tours due to his health and like his wife just had heart issues. His face is paralyzed. Like, I don't think, I don't think it's in the cards for him anymore. I mean, he's how he's like 30 now and he's been touring since he was like eight years old. (laughs) Yeah, dude, he's, uh, I, I imagine there's some real burnout there, truthfully. Right. Like, right. He, and, and like, wh- what else does he have to do? Like, he could just do, he, what he should do, and what I like love that certain celebrities do, like Adele disappears for like 10 years, years. Yeah. in between her albums. Yeah. And then she just comes back out of the woodwork with an absolute banger. Here I am. Yep. And then releases a bunch of great music, does a tour, does a press tour, does some shows goes back to living her life reappears like that's what i feel like that sh- is like a more sustainable model when you get to a certain level of fame than to like always be doing the ground still right. like just just take some time chill don't Dude. have multiple strokes because you're like, right you've been performing since you were eight touring the world and being on youtube and dancing with people and like dude like incredible and Incredible career arc for Justin Bieber. But anyways, vacation was great, and uh, we had a great time. And uh, some surprises along the way. People, Some people knew. Some people knew the whole story. Some people knew half the story. Some people still don't know the story. Some people weren't texted. Some people were. Listen, if you know, guess what? That's you, pimp. You know. Congratulations. So I got Meg's The Ring, okay? I'll throw a pic up on the screen because you know she's going to be showing that shit off. We got Meg's The Ring. I got nervous. I proposed real quick. I had a whole speech, dude. I had a whole speech lined out, but I got real nervous. And so then I kept it real short and simple. And I basically said, look, you're my best friend. I love you. I got down on one knee. I said, will you marry me? And she said, what? Really? She was kind of surprised. She kind of had an idea, but she said she was surprised. She said yes. She took it. We're engaged. It happened. Boom. Drop the mic. Not this one, though, because it's expensive. So listen, uh, that happened. So then she was all happy. We went out. We celebrated. And then the next day, surprise number two, before we go to dinner, we go to another Airbnb where, boop, we find her best friend and our son 
Ollivander. I surprised her with Ollie at the beach. There's pictures on Twitter. I'll have them up here. Follow me on Twitter, dude. At Levi underscore McCurdy. You'll see all this shit before we even talk about it on the pod, and you'll know exactly what's going on. Ollie was at the beach. He loved it. He had a great couple days. One minor breakdown, no big deal, but that's okay. And then he traveled back, uh, and then we traveled back separately as well, and it was just a great time. Um, and so we, uh, we had fun. It was a great vacation, great food, dude. Where did we go? We went to, um, Captain George's Seafood Buffet, of course. Nacho Hippo, we made there three to four times, I think. Three to four. We went to Dirty Dawn's Oyster Bar, uh, two times because we discovered that late in the trip. And so I wanted to go back at least once more. Um, so we'll definitely be going back there. We went to, uh, Dick Slash Resort, uh, photos on the screen of Meg's and I's hats. Um, mine said, I'm not gay, but my ass is. And Meg said, uh, I, I enjoy sex, but just not with him, AKA me, which is half true. So, um, and then that food was great as well. Meg's ate an entire plate of spaghetti and meatballs. And for those of you who don't know, Meg's doesn't like her meats in weird forms like nuggets or ball shapes. So she's never really eaten meatballs before. And now she's kind of into them. So thank you, Dick Slash Resort. We got the 45 ounce uh, margarita mugs. We got the shirts. And Meg's got a thong that says, I love Dick's. And then Last Resort, real tiny underneath that, which is also true so uh it was a great vacation um shout out to everyone who helped and then oh when we got home one last surprise of the vacay morgan and christina sisters came over um and they decorated everything so shout out to them uh and everything they do uh for us so they came and decorated they put flowers up and they're they're, uh, if i'll put some pictures on the screen flowers and balloons and banners and uh, words and decorations and everything, and a card and everything, candles on the bed. So it was cute. Um, it was cool. So it was a successful vacation, successful engagement. It's about damn time, dude. I know. I know. I think Megs and I met in like 2008, 2009, maybe, I think. I think it's been it's been like 12 years or some crazy shit. So we're going to get married, um, and we're just going to, we're probably going to Vegas. We're either going to Vegas, <clears throat> Taco Bell in Vegas or Taco Bell in LA. And we're just going to fly our friends out and have a killer weekend and call it a day. And, uh, it's going to be a blast. But, um, and if you're invited, guess what? We're probably going to do like a big wedding party wad pod episode. Um, we'll probably throw on Patreon and then release it for free. Cause no one will sign up to buy it. Maybe everyone involved will buy it and then I'll feel successful and then they'll cancel and then it'll be okay, dude. Listen, uh, this has been episode 50 of the, what are we doing podcast? I'm so sorry. It's a week late. I was busy getting engaged to my best friend. Thank you guys, uh, for listening to this episode. It's been a blast. It's been 50 so far. We've got two more coming for a year straight, but listen, we're chugging along. I'm hoping my consistency gets back on point. Thank you guys so much for listening. Go to our sponsors. Um, it's dudrobe.com and you're going to use promo code WAD for 20% off those dude robes, dude. And you're going to love them. Um, you're going to do that. And then you're also going to hit our Patreon. It's a dollar. And as soon as you sign up, I'm going to praise you from the mountains of Mount Everest and you will be on the podcast and you will get shirts. I'll even get you a damn dude robe. If you sign up, if you're the first person to sign up for our Patreon, you get a dude robe. There you go. Sign up now. It's only a dollar. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. I love you. Be back soon. Here we go.